Good morning everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. If you are new here, hi, I'm Taylor. I work on a small dairy farm in Maine and I do vlog style videos on the life of a dairy farmer. So it does seem to be a recurring theme lately, but unfortunately we are starting late again this morning. Um, and the reason this morning is because we had to take a link out of the barn cleaner chain and I'll shut this fan off so you can actually hear me. We actually had to take a link out of the barn cleaner chain. You can see it's nice and tight up against that wing board right now, but the wing board was all the way out and we hadn't really noticed it because it's been so cold lately and we've been busy and focusing on that, that um, the chain was almost going to run right off in it. So we did have to fix that, which was kind of hard because it's been so cold that the links were frozen together. You can see this one is frozen a little bit. It's got poop stuck in the end of it. And we had to chip that out and chisel it out with a hammer and it did take quite a while, but we did get a link all taken out so it's nice and tight. Should be no danger of it running the barn cleaner chain off the head in there, so that is good. But it does mean that we're starting a little late this morning, but that's okay. Before we get into what we are going to be doing today, I thought I'd introduce a couple girls to you guys. So this right here is Josephine. I just like to call her Jo. She is a pure Holstein. She's about five years old. We actually got her a few days after she had her first calf. We bought her from the cattle dealer. She's actually half mine and half Brent's. Um, the reason for that is the cattle dealer owed me a little bit of money for a cow that I had shipped with him. Instead of just giving me the cash for that, I just paid half toward this cow and Brent paid the other half. So she is half mine and half Brent's. Something about her that is a little strange is you can see she has an ear tag number. It's around like 10,000 and something. She actually came from one of the biggest farms around here. They milk about a thousand cows. She actually has a little computer chip in this other ear. I don't know if you can see that. Um, so she came from a really, really big farm, and it's kind of strange because when we got her, she was so small that it was almost not feasible that she had actually had a calf. She was the smallest cow I've ever seen that had a calf. She was just teeny tiny. See, she's still not very tall for a Holstein. Are you okay, Mary? You all right? Okay. You can see she's still not very tall for a Holstein. She's almost the same size as Mary, and Mary is rather... Jersey sized for a Jersey Brown Swiss. Greta is actually bigger than Joe. And she's actually grown like unbelievable amount. Like the cattle dealer couldn't even believe it when he came in one time and we told him that this was the same cow. Um, we paid next to nothing for her because she was so awful looking. But she really did come around from it. But it just confuses me that such a big farm, I mean they have good cows. I don't know how they made a mistake to breed her so young like that. I just don't really know what happened, especially since they must artificially breed. I don't understand what happened with her, but she did come around from it and she's doing well now, but she's still just a little bit stunted. That is Joe. Also, you guys may have noticed that the cows are eating a second crop bale. Brent was actually down in the hay building the other day getting a bale for the girls for the morning feeding, and he found around 50 second crop bales dry that we had done last year and we didn't even know that we hadn't fed out, so that was quite a good surprise. So the girls are enjoying that right now. Um, it was a rather big bale, so you can see that they've cleaned up quite a bit of it already. So this right here is Apple. She's around nine years old, probably. She's actually one of the first heifers that I ever went with Brent to pick up when I started working here. Um, she's a Holstein Shorthorn Cross. She's a really, really good girl. You can tell by her big belly that she's very close to calving. She's dried off. She'll be calving in probably um, two or three weeks, so she's a little ways off, but um, something about her is she actually escaped one time when she was younger. She was kind of wild when she was younger, and we were chasing her around because she actually got out of the fence completely, and she almost ran right into the manure pit, right over the side wall, so that would have been really, really bad. She would have possibly drowned because it was springtime, um, so that is something about her. She almost committed suicide unintentionally. So those are the two girls. What I wanted to do today, I gotta turn on this fan before I forget. So since we didn't really have much planned today, I was just gonna do a few things. Clean the milk room, just clean up around here. Just do a few things to help out around here. But it is time to milk the girls, so we'll get them milked and then we'll get into the rest of our day. So the last machines just came off. We've already fed the girls their other bale. They're eating a wrapped one right now. Before we do anything else, we do have to take a bale out back. They did run out. Um, they ate a lot through that cold spell, so Brent already has a dry bale ready for them. You can see he's got that out there. He's just in the milk room cleaning up the last machine, and then we're gonna take that out. I've already got the sawdust cart pushed out of the way. The tarp is rolled up and the gate is open just so I can go up there and slide that door open real fast. Um, Cause I do have to stay here and open these doors for him just so we don't let in any cold air. So now I am just waiting for him to come back. I always love watching the girls enjoy their feed. 
They always seem so like chilled out and... I did forget to mention, we did de-lice the girls again, because as you can tell, we do have a couple that have lice pretty badly. This one, she has, you can see she's been scratching pretty bad, so we did de-lice them again and it seems to be helping, so. So we did do that for them, just to make them more comfortable. about maybe letting the cows out tomorrow. Tomorrow it is supposed to be 48 degrees, so it's plenty warm enough for them to go out. And they need a little bit of exercise because they have been stuck in the barn for a while since this has been so cold lately. So we're thinking about just leaving all this stuff on the floor just because it's really good grip. They won't slip if they get fighting out here. We do, however, have to clean up this giant pile of ice from all the cold weather we've had. We just cleaned this out. We didn't have anything to do with it, so we just threw it right in front of the door. So Brent's going to push those outside because I don't think we're going to be letting them out on the pad because there's a lot of snow and ice out there. But I've got to get in and bed the girls, and then we'll get to the rest of our day. So it is milk truck day, and usually on milk truck day, I kind of just like to clean up a little bit. Just make sure it looks good for the milk truck driver. You can see I did clean the floor yesterday, so that's all clean. Other than when we track a little bit of hay in, the floor is pretty clean. This is just excess milk that got spilled a little bit. Um, so I will spray that down. But the thing that I really wanted to focus on today is I haven't washed the outside of the tank in a really, really long time. You can see it just gets these little spritzes of milk on it and it gets dried on and it just creates this film and it looks dull and disgusting. And also there's a whole bunch of dust over here. So I really just kind of wanted to take a minute today and just give that outside a good washing. So that is what I'm gonna do. I did wanna mention that usually the milk room is not this crowded with stuff, but it's been so cold that we have space heater. We were using that outside, so we needed to keep that warm and it was warm in here, so we just put that in here to keep it warm. What I'm gonna do is, this is just a hose that we have that's hooked right up to the hot water, so I'm just gonna give it a good spritz where I want to wash it. I'm gonna do it in sections because it's so big. Um, a lot of you have asked what size it is. It is pretty big for a small farm like this. It's actually 13,000 pounds, so it's pretty big for our size farm. I'm also gonna wash this pipe that goes over the top of the tank because when we move the pipe over, it does get some milk on the bottom of that. So I'm gonna clean that too. So I think this morning I'm going to start at the front. So we'll spray that down. And then I'll show you guys what I use. It's definitely nothing scientific. So I just spray this down, get my brush, and we just use dish soap. Any dish soap that degreases works extremely well on just polishing the outside of a tank. So it's not really worth spending the money to use that expensive dairy cleaner on it if you're just gonna it's just gonna get dirty anyway so i just 
sprinkle that all over the front of it or whatever part I'm cleaning while it's still wet. Give that a good scrub and then rinse it off really quickly because it will dry on there pretty fast. I do like to do this after the milk truck is done too, just so I don't get anything in the tank. Um, it's not really much of a danger of that, but I just like to do it just because. Just so that you know nothing's getting in there. But I usually avoid the cover and stuff when he hasn't come yet, just so, like I said, I don't get anything in there. I always, it always makes me like weirdly happy to see the really nice zero, like all shiny. I'm a strange person. And then I'll usually come over here and clean this side. This is probably going to be the only side you guys will be able to watch me clean anyway, because the other side, I don't think there's enough room to put the tripod over there. So you'll just have to use your imagination. Looks just like this side. So. And I do have to use the set tool because I'm short. I will start at the top, that way I'm not rinsing dirty water down onto the tank. spray this one I'm gonna have to spray that direction because the back of the tank and the electrical stuff is over here so I will spray this direction I steamed up the lens again So this is what it looks like finished. It's super shiny and clean, much better than it looked before. You can see the top is all clean, the back is clean. It just looks really, really nice when it's all clean. Obviously, it's old, so there are some places on it, like right here, where it's just permanently stained. It's just got marks on it that you can't clean off, but that's okay. All in all, it looks really, really good, I think. So I just like to clean that before the milk truck comes. Um, clean the floor, obviously. You can see I did rinse that down a little bit more. Clean the stool because I'm anal about stuff like that. And I do like to stock up these towels right here because the milk truck driver will use them to wipe his hands, so I did that. And another thing that I do like to do is... Sometimes this receiving jar gets kind of dirty. I think it gets chlorine on it sometimes. So I just like to clean that up because you will not believe how much better it looks when it's clean. And I also do like to clean off the... Um, I'm not really sure what you call this, just the receiver panel, I guess. I do like to take a paper towel and just wipe that off and make sure that's all clean. So I will do those two things and then we should be done. Take a couple of these towels that we use for the cows and I usually just damp them down and then um, clean that off. You have to be careful because there is a breaker switch on there that I've hit before and scared myself. And I just take a dry one and wipe that off. So when I'm cleaning this glass jar, I just spray it down a little bit. And I use a calf bottle cleaner. You can see it's pretty dirty because I was just cleaning something else with it. I just use dish soap again. And just get in all those weird places with this.
right, so you can see this is all clean. It's so much better looking. I love how crystal clear it looks when you just clean it off. The receiver panel looks a lot better. And I don't know if you guys noticed, but this does have 44,911 hours. That thing has been running strong for, I think we figured it out one time and it was like five years straight that it ran. So that has been a really, really good system for us. So this is it, all clean. I don't do this every time the milk truck comes, probably every like two or three times the milk truck comes. I like to give it like a deep cleaning just so it looks really nice. And also you guys know we do get inspectors that come, so we just like to keep it clean for that reason. And it's just so much nicer to have a clean milk room. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and comment down below. Hopefully we will have some more interesting content coming pretty soon. It's almost spring. We can get ready to start spreading and just, just ready for the busy seasons. So keep it real, keep farming, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.